Metro News Talk Line with Hoppy Kerchival is presented by MVB Bank, your most valuable bank, member FDIC. Welcome back to the AARP broadcast location at State Capitol. Please welcome the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Good morning, Governor. Good to see hey, you. Hey, Hoppy. How are you doing this I'm morning? doing great. Thank you. Why did you feel compelled yesterday to call a news conference and say, look, I don't like this bill the way it exists now. Why did you feel like the, it was necessary to do that? Too much rumbling in the jungle. I mean, too much, much uncertainty and too much misunderstanding, surely of my position, but, but it, it's just, we just do not need to create another food fight over little or nothing, you know. Now, you know, there's, there's been people come out and say, oh, well, justice sided with the unions, and that's not true. That's not true in any way, shape, form, or fashion. All justice did was restate exactly what he had done before. We are able to give an incredible gift to our educators, our state workers, and our state police. And if you're gonna give that gift, why give it and then turn right around and, and, and put something with it that just kind of is, is a, you know, something that's not tasteful. Well, because well, we, the Republicans would say, and I think they did say, that this is, a, this is totality reform, that, the, that they want all those things in there for reform, to attach them to the pay raise. And, and I would say this, you know, I would say that there's things I'm sure that all sides can agree with that will perpetuate and better education and help our kids and help teachers and everything. It's not going to be perfect. I mean, it's not going to be what all one side wants, what all the other side wants. But for crying out loud, what, there are certain things that are super hot buttons and everything that I don't think we need to be approaching. One is the non-severability. The other is the, the uh, p paycheck protection stuff. The other thing is just, you know, we, I think we can probably look at a very limited charter school trial to see if that would work but to just to just throw that out there all on on, on day one and everything it's not going to work so here are some places where you where there potential for compromise and i think in talking with a lot of different folks there, there's a place you could get to on these things everybody's all in on the pay raise everybody's all in on the banking of the of the time everybody's all in on the additional money for pei so this thing about class size even the republicans now are against that about raising the class size so get that out right take that out that should have okay. been out Okay, longer, longer. probably shouldn't even have been in there. That's right. Okay, so you take that out. Paycheck protection, which says that if you belong to the union, that every year you have to re-up to have the money taken out of your paycheck. That, I think you and others see that as a, as a jab at the unions. Take that out, right? I think, I, I mean, it's not that it's all that bad an idea, but it's just, it's just not worthy to cause a gigantic statewide food fight over. It's just not, it, it, it needs out. Okay, so you take that out. Uh, charter schools, you mentioned, rather than having charter schools all across the state, maybe just have a couple pilot charter schools. That, you know, that's something that I think all sides ought to sit and talk about. Okay, education savings account. That's controversial because that means that the public money would go to any number of forms of education outside the public school, uh, that the money follows the kid. That's controversial. Teacher organizations don't like that. Democrats don't like that. Maybe limit that. Either take it out or make it just for a special needs student something like that right but but that's what the function of the bodies whether they be Senate and House ought to be doing that's what we ought to be doing you know but what we've got is now we've got uncertainty and an uprise that is is right on our doorsteps again to cause an ugly scene and absolutely hurt lots and lots and lots of people and at the end of the day you know, what I'm saying is, if there are things that we can better education with, I'm all in for. The Republicans, they're not the evil witch from the West. I mean, what they're doing is trying, I'm sure with all in them, they're trying to make things better. But there are certain things that are the hot buttons that we don't need to be broaching at this time. Well, and that's why I was suggesting that if you take out some of those hot buttons, I'm just trying to get a deal. <laughs> I'm just trying to get something that, yeah. and, that, that and, would work and not cause chaos, but also improve education. Let's move to one of those things. That is, Governor, there are a lot of proposals in there like um, 
uh, uh, putting more money into the scholarship scholarship program for students who want to get their education and then teach in geographically challenged areas or in science and math and special ed, put more money into that, empower local counties to have greater autonomy uh, for uh, providing uh, differential pay to math and science and special ed, you know, things like that. Can you get on board with things like that? I mean, that's exactly what I said in the state of the state. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, I said, you know, in the state of the state address, I said, we need to probably come up with a way to attract math, science, foreign language, and special ed teachers. We need to pay some kind of incentive to be able to get them, you know, to be able to have those people. I mean, absolutely. I would just say, for crying out loud, this was such a simple, simple thing. And what we've done is now created you know, divide and everything, we should have never done this. I mean, we should have never gone down this path and created this level of divide. Now, we can make it better. There's no question we can make it better. And I'm all for that. And I really truly believe with all in me that the Republicans are trying to do that. And they are trying to make it better. And we need to be open-minded, respectful of their view, respectful of my views. I mean, for crying out loud, I mean, you know, somebody should have come to me and said, look, Governor, how do you feel about all this and all that? And we sent signal after signal, talk, talk, talk. You know, so you were left out. You're saying you were left out of the process. Well, it's to some degree, to some degree, but not. You know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to whine about that and everything. Our people have been in discussion with them over and over and over. I have. I have said a, a thousand times over. You know, what we needed to do was deliver a clean bill for all the state employees, teachers, state police, and everything else, and we can continue to find ways to improve education. All the things from the math teachers to, to everything we've already talked about. What, what, what Republicans would say that, Governor, is that you need some leverage that if you just did a clean pay raise bill, some of these other things that you and others want to do, like the differential pay and more pay for math and science teachers, those kinds of things, that the unions would fight against and kill unless it's tied into the pay raise. So that's, there, are, there is an argument for motivation to include things that are less popular with the unions if you include the pay raise, doesn't okay. that make sense? I, it does. It makes absolutely perfect sense. But you can't you can't get to the to the buttons that are so hot that they're going to cause this massive food fight. You know why in the world are we going after paycheck protection? Why in the world do we have this poison pill, this non-severability in there? But as far as the math, and you're exactly right. In, you know, in order to pass this great bill and everything and this incredible pay raise and everything else, we need to get all these other things included. And I am absolutely all in, Hoppy. I have been all in from day one. You know, but what we need to do is sit down with cool heads and negotiate these things that we can work on and both sides give a little bit and we get a better system. Do you think then the, Republican, the Republicans in the Senate made a tactical error by taking this approach with the bill? I think a tactical error in, in regard to the, the, the hottest of the hot buttons. And you know, and I wish to goodness that we would, have, we would have sat down and tried to work out all that we could possibly work out with all parties and everything before we got everybody in the state all riled up. Okay, you are, you're right. There is, there is a rile up factor in West Virginia. What would you say, and, and already there's some, you know, they're most riled up in Mingo County. What would you say to those teachers and service workers who are contemplating or talking about the possibility of a walkout as this bill is being debated? I think that's a real mistake. And I think, uh, you know, uh, everybody has a right to voice their, their opinion and everything. I think, but, uh, but I think that's a real mistake. And, and it's something that uh, we, should, we should honor and respect the process of what we're doing down here. And if we get to the point in time where, you know, it is absolutely so abrasive that they want to, you know, voice their, their opinion, well, I, I'd say, you know, I'd say so, but it's so premature. And I think it is an error in judgment. And uh, I wish to goodness that uh, the unions would shut that down and everything else because th they don't need to be doing that. Governor Jim Justice is with us. Before I let you go, you said in the state of the state, you said we're going to take some of this bond money, we're going to put it to roads. And roads is, roads is a big issue in West Virginia right now. And is there any, I have heard no plan, specific plan yet from your office or highways concerning how you plan to do that or what direction you're going to go in trying to hashtag FTDR the secondary roads? 
Right. I, I, I think you've just got to give me just a little bit more time. We were meeting with the highway people again today. You know, that this is an issue that we feel like that there's some excess dollars that we can shove over towards secondary roads. You know, some way, somehow, we've got to get that done. Because while we're, we're we, we just neglected our secondary roads for so long, and they got in such bad shape because this state was so upside down and everything and didn't have the money to do it. And now climbing back and repairing those secondary roads should be an incredible priority. And I'm trying like crazy to get that to where we don't slow down the bigger projects, but we're able to shift money over to the secondary roads and be able to, to really pour it on. Yeah, I, I, know it, I know it is a complicated issue for a variety of reasons, but you're saying you will, you are in discussions with highways, you will soon have something specific about, specifically about the secondary and tertiary yeah, roads. I, I, think, I think within the next week to 10 days, we'll have something that just is, is absolutely specific. And, uh, and, and, I, and I understand, you know, that you may think, well, well, gosh, you know, how are they going to do it? I mean, you know, exactly what we're going to do. We're not going to alienate our bondholders and all that kind of stuff in any way, shape, form, or fashion, but, uh, but we're going to find a way. All right. Governor Jim Justice, Governor, thanks for coming on. No, Hoppy, thank you all. All so, right. Bye -bye. Good to talk to Governor Jim Justice here, and the governor making clear that uh, there's some poison pills in this bill. There are things that just don't need to be in the bill that cause aggravation that is not necessary. And uh, there's probably another way forward on this. Right now in the Senate today, uh, they're going to go into a committee of the whole meeting in about a half hour. And at that time, they're going to take this bill. The entire Senate is going to take this bill and go through what would essentially be a committee process and take this bill point by point. There'll be a, an explanation of each element of this bill. And by the way, if you want to watch that, you can watch it on our website at wvmetronews.com. We'll have a link to the Senate. You can watch it and or listen to it as they go through this bill point by point. And also there will come sometime, uh, there will be expert witnesses that will be called, that we'll talk about, there'll be those who are for the bill and against the bill, those who are for charter schools and against charter schools, those who are for the um, uh, having differential pay for a variety of subjects and those who are against that. So all that testimony is gonna take place today as this bill continues to take shape. But I think you're seeing a theme develop and that is that some of these elements of the bill just are, are, pr are probably gonna have to be removed if there's a chance for the entire bill to pass. This is Talkline on Metro News. Metro News is the voice of West Virginia.